And uh, I still haven't brought some of my knowledge since graduating here. At first, I wasn't really much sure what to say. I mean, what does anyone say at a high school graduation? And I thought long and hard about who spoke in mind. It was, it was our very own Mr. Blue. Yeah! Well, I was 22 because uh, I couldn't remember a word that he said. <laughs> so if I bomb here today, I can be forgotten too. But I was a little bit nervous as I, uh, you know, was going to come here, and I, I made sure to bring my trusty fidget spinner. So if I, you know, got a little nervous, I did a spin, and I, you know, calm my nerves. But as soon as I got on campus, uh, Mr. Brown confiscated from me. So if I'm a little nervous today, I'm sorry. But uh, blame Larry Bird himself, Dave Brown. <laughs> But uh, I do have some advice for you guys today. So you, I just want you guys to, you know, I'm going to make it really short. So no more selfies. Stop swiping right. Don't try to like find any dates tonight yet. And just listen for a few minutes. Perhaps some of you guys have heard some of my accomplishments that uh, we just talked about. Some of you students maybe seen the banner of me in the, in the gymnasium. But I'm really no different than anyone here. Twelve years ago, I sat in the same metal chair as you guys are sitting in, and I too was excited to leave New York High School. <laughs> and today, when you leave, your teacher is going to rejoice just like when I left here. <laughs> you see, I wasn't just a job here, I was also that annoying student that I don't think any of my teachers really liked. In Mr. Dykeman's class, I wouldn't do anything for a laugh. <laughs> and Miss Becky has told my father at parent teacher conferences that I was a disruption to my class. <laughs> and so, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't valedictory. I didn't win the best smile. I wasn't most likely to succeed. I wasn't the prom queen. I mean, no, I wasn't the prom king. I wasn't even voted most athletic. Overall, I was quite average. But yet I'm here in front of you today because I've been doing something differently than most people since the day that I graduated. And I've been doing it differently as a life choice. It's a conscious decision I make in almost every instance of my life. But like I said, I'm no different than you. My parents thought I was special when I was young, and I'm sure their parents think you are too. Uh, and our parents tell us, like, go and do great things. And you know, you could do anything if you set your mind to it. I'm sure everyone would actually heard that quote. It's actually a quote from Brother Franklin. And, you know, it's a. Uh, sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> but it's something that I have lived by, something that I believe in. But life is tough. We all believe this, we all want to do great things. You know, we want to be firemen, actors, we want to be astronauts, but life gets tough. And we start settling for smaller goals. But I'm here to say that when life gets tough and things don't seem so realistic anymore, it's not time to give up. You see, I'm here to tell you my secret. My secret is actually the second half of that quote. Does anyone remember? The second half is, if you can achieve anything, if you go to the right school. No, 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 no it's not. <laughs> the school doesn't really matter. You achieve anything, you just beg for it. No, that's not it either. Begging will only get you so far. And maybe you don't want to keep your questions. <laughs> no, you can do anything if you set your mind to it. You see, we have to set our minds to it. And when we'll have to stop, we don't get your way, doesn't mean you have to make excuses. My journey here wasn't easy. I came from a poor family, an average student, an average athlete, and yet I was able to accomplish some pretty spectacular things in my career. When I was at Oregon, my uh, opening throw, I had the number one throw in the world. I went on to break the school record, the conference record, two conference championships, a silver medal at the Pan American Games. I broke the uh, one of the Olympic trials last year, um, and I'm a two time Olympian. I have, uh, gosh, the list goes on. Um, <laughs> I 
and I met you same hole, Alice and Feelings, Sean Johnson, swimming legend Michael Phelps, I think we've hung out with Kobe Bryant, Kevin Durant, and LeBron James. I visited 18 different countries, including uh, Brazil, Australia, China, and France. I competed in front of over 80,000 people in the Olympic Games. I had over 50,000 Instagram followers. <laughs> All right, it's actually a stretch, I'm sure, but I am verified, I swear. <laughs> but like I said, it wasn't easy getting here. In fact, over my career, I had over 30 major injuries. I'm not saying it's a rolled ankle, straight knee. Like you said, I, I tore my elbow my first year of college. It's pretty useful for throwing, actually. <laughs> my, uh, when I was at Oregon, I became the number one thrower in the United States, and yet I tore my ACL. A year later, came back, tore my ACL again, three meniscus tears, tore my shoulder two years ago, and I fractured my back the last four out of five years. In fact, I can't actually remember a year that is easy. But I knew if I quit, and I settled, I would never become great. To give anything less than your best is a sacrifice to the gift. Steve Prefontaine said that about me, but I think it applies to all of our gifts, each and every one of us, not just that buddy. I knew that I had talent, and I wasn't willing to settle. But the more lead I got, the more I realized talent actually doesn't matter. Very little, actually. I wasn't the only one with talent. Everyone had talent. And the only thing that would separate us was our work ethic. Practicing a few days a week wasn't good out of high school. Practicing a few hours a day wasn't good out of college. Pretty soon I was putting in six to eight hours of grueling training, pushing my body to its absolute limits. Now I'm not saying that if you just try, you'll become an Olympian. Now, actually trying doesn't equal success at all. The only guarantee I have is that trying will bring failure. I think I've actually failed more than I have ever succeeded. Now, this is the part of every graduation speech that I watched on YouTube where I'm supposed to encourage you to go on and do great things, but I'm not gonna do that. I challenge you to go out into the world and fail. Now, don't pull me on the stage just yet. <laughs> but I'm serious. I challenge you to go out into the world and fail. Because let me tell you something. If I am failing, I am challenging myself. What good is success without roadblocks? How sweet is victory if it is just handed to you? This is the reason I challenge you to fail. Because when you overcome failure, you will find happiness. Go big, wear your heart on your sleeve, try to live uncomfortable, push your limits, and it'll pay off. Now some of you think you have it all figured out. I did too when I was at the group. And some of you, the rest of you, are worried. You have no idea what you're going to do with your life. And I'm here to tell you, it's okay. Because in four years, Every one of you will be back to your parents. <laughs> yes. That wasn't a joke. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that's okay too. So in closing, I want to leave you guys here fully equipped for the outside world. First, learn to do your taxes. No one's going to do that. No one's going to teach you how to do that. That's actually a necessity. Two, how cool you are in high school does not matter. So embrace your weirdness. It is your weirdness that makes you unique, and it is also your weirdness that someone will fall in love with. And it's your weirdness that will create something amazing. So embrace it. Don't be afraid to fail. One thing I know for sure is that we will fail. And if we know that we will fail, let us fail in the greatest way possible, striving for our dreams. When striving for your goals, make sure that you are giving it your best, setting your mind to it. If you think in this way, you can achieve anything. And if you follow my advice, you will leave here today 
and you will do something great with your life. You will achieve great things. You will find love, you will find happiness, and greatest of all, you will find yourself. And when you achieve your goals, don't forget how you got there or where you came from. Don't forget your parents who supported you. Don't forget your teachers who saw potential in you and pushed you the hardest. And least of all, your friends and loved ones who distracted you with happiness and laughter along the way. Today marks the end of an era, and tomorrow starts the first day of the rest of your lives. Tomorrow is the day you truly find yourself. It is up to you to make that person great. Thank you and congratulations to the Newburgh High School graduating class of 2017.